Welcome to this next Google SketchUp screencast where we're going to talk about drawing shapes and how to label those shapes. So here I've already created my room. When you draw a shape like we did in the last one using the pencil in the last video, uh, when you close the shape it fills in the surface. The lines on the outside are called edges. The area on the inside is called the surface. I'd like you to click on the surface of the room and go ahead and hit the delete key to delete it. That'll just help when we start putting stuff into the room we don't accidentally are clicking on too many things. Over here on my toolbar is the rectangle tool. I'm going to click that and outside of the classroom perimeter I'm just going to start drawing some some shapes just to show you. If you click once to start, you drag, you decide the size, you click again to stop. One very important thing when dealing with shapes and dealing with, with drawing lines, you never want to cross a line you've already drawn. So if I were to do this, that would be bad because what happens now is Google SketchUp thinks that this shape is supposed to be part of the larger area. So now it's actually separated and segmented this out and it gets into a lot of stuff that, that gets a little hairy that we don't want to deal with. So again, like we talked about earlier, I'm going to Command Z for undo, 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 and go back each of these to take it back to where I was. So I clicked on the rectangle shape. I draw my first desk. Let's say I draw my teacher desk. When you draw the shape, just like when you draw the line, when you're done drawing the shape, you can manually type in what that should be. So if I look at my notes, it says that the teacher desk was 5 feet by 3 feet. Now when I type that, that's 5 apostrophe, comma, 3 apostrophe. All together, no spaces, and I hit return when I'm done, and it automatically adjusts that to the correct size. Maybe I was drawing a student desk. Maybe the student desk was supposed to be 2 feet by 2 feet. 2 apostrophe comma 2 apostrophe return and it changes it to that. Now if I want to move these things I can't use the selection arrow to move these things. There is a move tool. The move tool is the four arrowed tool. So what I'm going to do first, whoops, there's a good example of what not to do. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to choose my selection tool. I'm going to draw around the object I want to move then choose the move tool and let's say the teacher desk was down in this area. Maybe the teacher desk had a little bit of rotation to it. I'm going to click on my rotate tool, which is the two little arrows rotating around each other. And what this does is this brings in a protractor. If I click once on my desk and somewhere in the center, and then I click my second click on the edge, it now makes it so that when I move my mouse cursor outside of that, I can rotate that object around on those two points that I've just plotted. So let's say the desk was at an angle like this. I'm going to click now, and it's going to lock it into that new position. So that's how you rotate, that's how you move. Again, you don't want to rotate something and have it go over a line you already drew. If you wanted to label an object, that's what this little tool here is. It looks like a little flag. If I click on that and I click on one of my shapes or one of my objects, it plants the little flag and now I can extend out that line. Maybe I'll just have it come out to about here. And now I can type teacher desk and then just click out of there when you're done and that item will be labeled. Now if I go to move this item, the flag should move with it depending on how I've selected it. You can always use the selection arrow if you're not sure and try to select around those items that you want to move together and then move them if they don't move together the first time. So that's a little bit with drawing shapes uh, with how to actually calculate your measurements and how to label. You can move on to the next video.